During this Domestic Violence Awareness Month, advocacy organizations are stepping up the ways they support survivors. After recent studies found alarming increases in the number of domestic violence cases being reported throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Senior correspondent Joanna Gagas reports on one group's effort to help those survivors rebuild their lives. Sometimes it's hard to find words for abuse, but everyone's always able to make images because they have images in their heads. And so the healing power of art making is incredibly strong. And that's why art therapy is offered to all of the survivors of domestic abuse who come to the Center for Hope and Safety in Bergen County. Marta Levy runs the art programs for both women and children. And the trauma comes through, expressing the trauma comes through with images and um, using various colors. And equally important is the women come into a group and they start realizing they're no longer isolated because many uh, um, victims are isolated. Like Aurora, who recently came to the center with her daughter after years of abuse. We were so cut off and isolated. So it was a cycle. It was just going around for many years and you keep going until you just end up well, how I was, I was so depressed and and I thought it was all my fault. So I come into a group and they start meeting others, other survivors, and they're able to talk to each other, tell stories, um, support each other. Do they make artwork together? In group, absolutely. This is what art of survivors in a group. Yes. Art of Survival is an exhibition on display at this art school in Demarest, giving voice to survivors' experiences and offering a conversation starter in the community around domestic abuse. This is called a, a woman's work is never done. This particular person likes to do art, she likes to saw. There's some whimsical parts of it here. And so but she... Maybe some and heavy parts as well. There's a chain here. Chain here, and it's a broken chain which is what allowed her to break away. Which is most often the hardest part. I had no um, control over our finances. And, and for the most part, our daughter witnessed everything. Even at that, when that happened, that incident, that he locked me in the other room. He even called the police on me and told them that it, it, was, it was my fault, that I was unstable, that I needed help. I knew then that I had to do something and that the next day that I was able to connect with Center for Hope and Safety, that they were able to take us in. The center is seeing more intense need and more complex trauma in their clients lately. The children are more damaged by the domestic violence they witnessed in their homes. And we believe that is related to the isolation that occurred during the pandemic and they were therefore exposed to a lot much more, a lot more violence than in the past when they would be able to go out to friends' homes, to schools. The center used to serve around 30 people a day. It's now around 118 and the numbers keep growing. We have a complete legal team of three attorneys as well as a paralegal and uh, they help survivors getting the restraining orders that they need to keep themselves safe, as well as provide representation in court. Everything from divorce and custody to immigration issues, but it's the healing and rebuilding that they're most focused on. And often that comes one stroke at a time. In Demarest, I'm Joanna Gagas, NJ Spotlight News.